Assume we have two devices, computing devices, right? One of them has information that the other one wants. And the one that has the information, it's gonna assume that the information it's got is correct. We'll show you a way later on how to make sure it feels confident that its information is correct, but let's assume that any information it's gonna transmit to the receiving machine, it thinks is correct or it knows is correct. We're gonna assume it is. And the receiving machine, when it gets a byte or you know data of any form, how does it know that something didn't get flipped on the way? I mean, there's all sorts of things that could flip a bit. Um, anything that can corrupt a bit. You know, for example, just simply electromagnetic waves going through the air. Sometimes they're strong enough to flip bits to change data. So how do we know that that received data is correct? Let's start, let's start our journey by going way, way back, back to the 1960s, when we talked about something called ASCII. If you remember our discussion about ASCII, we presented it in episode 19. And the original ASCII was just seven bits of data. And, and so we could represent, you know, anything in the English alphabet um, from A to Z, including capital letters A through capital letters Z and lowercase letters A through Z. We had punctuation marks, we had some control characters, we had a space, we had uh, numbers and so forth. For example, a lowercase A was equal to a hexadecimal 61, I believe it was. Now, that pattern of ones and zeros, we can fit in seven bits. So if I were to deliver a byte, I could use seven of those bits for my ASCII character. So the 61, so that would be one, one, zero, that is the six. We assume the most leading bit is always gonna be a zero, and then a one, zero, 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 one. All right, now, if we're sending a byte, we've got this extra bit here. And that extra bit could be used for error checking. Now there's not a lot, it's not a really robust version of error checking, but think about it this way. Whenever we were first using ASCII, one of the primary applications was to have a terminal where you would, every time you typed a key on the keyboard, it would send a character, a character that was available on the keyboard to a server, to a mainframe, to a large machine. And that large machine, if it wanted you to see something, for example, if I typed the letter A, it would be sent to the machine, and in order for us to actually see it on the display that was sitting in front of us, the machine actually had to send it back to us. And it did this over this serial, uh, this serial communication line, typically with ASCII. Um, and so whenever we, we, we weren't we're looking for a really huge amount of error checking, for example, if I pressed a key and I noticed that the character that came back to me was not the character I pressed, what would I do? I'd press backspace, which of course would be another seven bit character that would be sent to the machine and it would backspace and delete whatever it was that, ever I, that I just typed and I could correct it. You know, human communication is a lot like this. If I say something to you and you don't quite understand it, you think something is garbled, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna ask me to repeat it. And so frequently that is what happens. If there's an error detected, we ask you to send the character over again. Well, in the case of ASCII, what we did was we put this last bit and we set it as something called parity. Now, the parity bit, there's a couple of forms. Um, and in fact, there's actually four forms, two of which are useful. There is, for, as far as types of parity, we have uh, odd parity, we have even parity, we have mark, and we have space. Now, the mark and space aren't really of use whenever it comes to error checking. Basically, it says, you know this bit? We're always going to send the same value. If it's set to mark, just assume that the parity is always equal to uh, one, all right? And if it's space, the parity bit 
is always going to be set to zero, always. So if I have, if I've up front, and this is something that is agreed upon by both the transmitting device and the receiving device ahead of time, I am always going to send you mark parity, which means that you're going to always expect to see a one in that space. All right. But odd and even actually have a little bit of power behind them. They have some usefulness behind them. Odd says that the sum of ones in data plus parity is always odd, all right? Always. So that means that if I sent this packet, whoever is sending the packet has to, ahead of time, figure out what that bit's going to be. Is it going to be a zero or a one based on this algorithm here? One, two, three ones. So a lowercase a has three ones. That means our parity bit, if it is odd, is going to have to be a zero. Now, the receiving device is going to, as it's receiving these bits, it's going to count the number of ones. And if it, the value is not an e odd number, if the sum of ones is not an odd number, it knows that one of those bits or more bits got flipped in, transmit, in transit and we need to ask for a resend. Even parity, I'm guessing you can figure out exactly how this works, means that the sum of ones in the data and the parity, in other words, all of the bits, is always even. All right, seems pretty straightforward, right? Which in that case, if this were, if we had agreed ahead of time to always use even parity, then we'd have one, two, three ones in our data, and we would have to set the parity bit so that we had an even number of ones. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about parity. All right, let me make a little bit of room here. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this parity. And the idea is that I'm just going to add one more bit in order to detect if there has been an error in my data. So let's go ahead and say, I don't know, up front, I have these eight bits that I'm going to send. Seven bits is data, which means that I can transmit a value in unsigned binary between 0 and 127, those values, all right? Already up front, you probably see that there's a limitation. We do most everything with eight bits, and so this seven bits and reserving one bit for this error checking, this, this, this dubious parity, um, already seems like it's costing us something, but let's go ahead and, and transmit some data anyway, all right? And so there is our parity bit. All right, that last bit. So let's go ahead and make up some data. Uh, how about I want to send 42? And 42 in binary, well, there is a 32 in it, right? There's an 8 and there's a 2, all right? Which means that if this now is our 2 to the 0 position, which is 1, this is the 2's place, this is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. That means to send 42, it's going to be 0, 1. There's a 32. No 16s, an 8, no 4, a 2, no 0. All right. Now, how many ones do we got? Well, remember, up front, I have to say, am I transmitting as odd parity or even parity? So we've agreed ahead of time that all of our, dis all of our transmissions back and forth, we're going to make it even parity. And in fact, this may sound rather familiar, right? Remember, the, in, the multiple input exclusive OR gate. So if I've got an eight input exclusive OR gate, big guy, right? Eight inputs on an exclusive OR gate, it's going to output a zero if I have an even number of ones coming into that exclusive OR gate. I'm going to output a one if I have an odd number of ones coming into that exclusive OR gate. Well, if I run these seven bits, these seven bits into this exclusive OR operation, then it's going to count the number of ones. I've got one, two, three. It's an odd number. Odd number, I'm going to output a one. I take that one and I put it in the parity bit. All right. 
So it's really easy. The hardware is already there for us. Just simply exclusive or all of the ones, all of the data going into, all the data bits going into the data. I have an odd number of ones, outputs a one, that goes into my parity bit. What is my total number of ones? One, two, three, four. I have four ones. So really, what even parity is, the bit, specifically the bit, how we set the bit. Even parity bit is set equal to the output from an exclusive OR gate, or exclusive OR operation, you could say, all right? So if we exclusive OR all of those guys together, output's a one because we have an odd number of ones, put that one in the parity bit, guess what? We have a total number of, ev an even number of ones in our data and parity. Now, if a bit gets flipped, all right? So let's say that we got a bit flip, and this guy turned to a one. We know that guy's wrong. We know it's wrong because we knew what the data was, but the recipient does not know. As far as the recipient is concerned, hey, 58 was what we needed to receive, right? No, turns out it wasn't. How do we know? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five ones. All right, now let's go back to the exclusive OR operation again. If I do an exclusive OR of all of my bits this time, the data and the parity together, a one will indicate an error for even parity, a zero will indicate no error for even parity, all right? And so if I have a one out of an exclusive OR of all of the bits, the data and the parity together, just simply ask for a resend. How does the odd parity work? Well, the odd parity, you generate the bit, we'll just simply say generated, from the output of an exclusive NOR gate. All right, so. I'll put an exclusive nor. Huh. Yeah. Just the inverse of an or, an exclusive or. All right. So, kind of have an operate an idea of the mechanics of this exclu of this, excuse me, of this parity. What is in fact, some of you are probably looking up front, what is the problem with parity? Yeah, you've probably caught it. What if two bits flip? All right, now I had the 16 position and the two position, they flipped. One went from a zero to a one, one went from a one to a zero. Is parity gonna identify that an error has occurred? Well, we run all of those bits. Remember, we're doing even parity. We run all of those bits into an exclusive OR gate. One, two, three, four, even, output a zero. Everything's cool, right? No, it's not. The data is incorrect. Now, you think, okay, well, you switched one from a zero to a one and one from a one to a zero. Well, let's try it. So we switch two of them from a zero to a one. All right. Now, the, bit, the 16th position and the four position, both of those got switched from a zero to a one. How's our data looking? One, two, three, four, five, six, six ones, still okay, right? So the problem with parity, and it's okay with an e odd number of bit flips, but the problem with parity is it cannot detect an error if an even number of bit flips have occurred. All right, there you go. So a quick introduction to parity. Now, you may think that parity is useless then because it won't be able to detect if we have an even number of bit flips. Tell you what though, if you come back and look at how our discussion of Hamming code works out, you'll see that parity is still incredibly important when it comes to error detection and even error correction.